you like my nook? Hi guys, welcome to Educating Shani. I'm Shani and I'm recovering from an eating disorder. Hi Shani, hi! Okay, so welcome to my nook in my new house. It's not done yet, obviously, but I figured it's already looking kind of cute, so I'm gonna film in front of it today. What do we think of my nook and all of the colorfulness that's everywhere? And that's very Shani, and that's the ambiance, the Shani beyonds that I've created. So you're welcome. Okay, so today I wanted to do something that I haven't done in a really long time, which is sit down and talk to you guys about some pretty deep things that are going on with me. And um, as you can tell from the title of this video, probably, um, I have not felt safe enough to talk to you guys about this for a while. I've been trying, I've actually tried to make this exact video about five times in the last week. And every time I try, I get too scared and I chicken out. So hopefully I won't today. I have been having some struggles and I don't feel safe like I used to, to come on here and talk to you guys about it. So I want to talk about that for a minute and why I feel that way and maybe how someone out there can help me. Maybe I don't know how you guys can help me. I don't know. You guys are so wonderful. And the majority of you, I, I feel, I, all of you, I love you and I feel comfortable with you, but I'm trying to figure out why I've felt so unsafe lately talking about my struggles. So, um, yeah. Okay. So basically I, you guys know that first of all, it's really hard for me to talk about my religion. I've always shied away from talking about that. And I've always like been open that I believe in God and forgiveness and all of those things, but I've never really, and Jesus, of course, but I've never really like gone in depth with it because the world judges Mormonism so harshly and so wrongly and I think a lot of religions get judged wrongly and ours is definitely one of them um, and so I'm not the type of person that likes confrontation I don't like to fight with people or anything like that and so I very rarely talk about it the other thing though is that I've never felt safe doing that here let's just be honest here I've never felt safe talking about my religion here but I have always felt safe talking about my eating disorder and self-harm and depression and anxiety and all of those things. But lately I have not felt that. Um, how do I even say, I'll just come out and say it. How do I even say this? Please hear me out after I say this. Please don't attack me. I know that most of you will not. Most of you will not, but some of you will. So I have messed up a few times in the past, since we moved here to this house. So how long have we been here? A couple weeks, I think. And I have messed up three times, which means that I have binged and purged. For those of you that don't know what my messing up means. For me, that means I binged and purged three times. Um, I remember when I started my channel, I thought to myself, man, if I can just go one day a week without doing it, I'd be so proud of myself. And then it turned into two days a week and I'd be so proud and three days and blah, 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 blah. Until eventually I stopped completely and I did stop completely a few months ago. We all know this. And... I had one relapse, not a relapse, like a mess up, after I had stopped completely um, just a couple of months ago, I think, three months ago maybe, and the attacks that I got by probably people I shouldn't be listening to, but again, this is one of those things where I need to feel safe being okay with like my real feelings, and my real feelings get hurt by those people as much as you guys tell me, as much as... Everyone in the world tells me to ignore the haters, ignore the trolls, ignore the mean comments. It's just not that easy. It's so hard to put your life on blast for anybody in the world to see and then to stay sane and to stay, um, you know, having good, healthy thoughts and not taking things out on yourself or taking things too seriously. It's just so much more difficult than you can imagine. Um, but when that happened, I had this little voice inside of me, I think, that 
was like, okay, you're good. You're healed. Let's be real. You're healed by then. When I had that one mess up, I was like, okay, you're actually healed. This is a slip up. You're fine. No big deal. Just start up and do it again and blah, blah, blah. And I did. But I always had that in the back of my mind for the past two months or however three months it's been that if I did mess up again, that I didn't feel safe enough to tell you guys about it. And so because of that, I have not told you about the three mess ups that I've had in the past couple weeks. Um, but anyway, going back to what I was saying before, um, I remember I used to be so proud of myself if I only did it. If I had, in two years ago, if I had only done it three times in two weeks, I would have been like, who is that person? How did she, how did I do that? That's amazing. You know what I mean? But because I recovered almost 100% and what I mean by that is I stopped behaviors 100%, but my mind was still eating disordered, obviously, and it might always be, and that's fine. Um, but since then, I felt that it's not okay for me to have one mess up even. And whether that's true or not is obviously debatable, but the things that people said to me last time really hurt and I stupidly have gone, again, don't get mad at me, you guys. It's so much harder than you can imagine. If you're a YouTuber, you know what I'm talking about. It is hard to not find the mean comments because they're they're in the sea of good comments. You just come across them, you can't help it. If, if I if I ignored the mean comments, I'd have to not read all of your good comments. So I have to read your good comments because that's what's been keeping me going. And in the mix of that, I come across some bad ones and sometimes they affect me more than others. And this one really affected me. There was something that I did do, however, that I should not have done was I went looking for comments about me and I found like I purposely went to other people's videos about me. I went online. I went on pro Anamia websites who have talked about me many times. I've read articles about me that are written on Google and all kinds of things. And so many people said this one thing that stuck with me, which was that basically calling me a selfish um, brat and that I use people and that I I waited until I healed myself until I got new teeth and made people pay $40,000 for it and then I just start throwing up again like I had planned it or something. And that infuriated me because why would I do that? The people who donated are all people that I love and care about more than anything and I have made it my goal to show them that I can do this and that I can recover. So never would I do that on purpose, but it did happen. and. I never, like when I messed up, it wasn't like I was thinking to myself, ooh, I got away with it. <laughs> I had the whole world buy me new teeth. And then, so now I can go back and throw up and binge and purge again. No, it was a mistake. It was a mistake. But that little thing inside of me that I have, that we all know and love apparently, is my big fat golden heart that effing forgives everybody, tries to see the good in everybody, tries to understand where everybody is coming from and what they're thinking and reading people and the things that I've always done since I was a little girl. Sometimes that's a really bad thing because I'll look at these comments and I'll be like, oh, you know what, they're probably having a really bad day. Maybe their dad hit them today or maybe their mom died or maybe, they're getting bullied at school and they're taking it out of me. So I should just take it on myself so that they don't have to blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like that's what goes through my mind. And so I quickly forgive, but then I don't forget. And then the negativity of the comment, even if they're trying to be constructive, most of the constructive comments don't trigger me or bother me at all. I can tell when you're trying to help. That's different. I'm talking to people who straight up say, what a selfish bitch who took $40,000 from the world and then just went right back to her eating disorder. She's gonna die soon anyway, die bitch. Or, you know, like stupid, like things like that. I guess, and this is probably my fault. No, this is my fault. And this I do need to apologize for. I think that I took those comments and assumed that every one of you was thinking the same thing to me because sometimes 
we've all been there, especially people who watch, most people who watch my channel suffer with some sort of mental illness or eating disorder or self-harm or something like that. Most of you do. Some of you don't and you still watch just to support me and that's freaking awesome. By the way, I love that so much. Um, and thank you for that. Um, but so many of you struggle with this and so you know how hard it is to focus on the good things in life when your brain is telling you something completely different. It's just not that easy. And even if I didn't have mental illness and I was still a YouTuber, I think that every single YouTuber has problems with this. It's just so difficult to ignore the hate and the meanness and to not start to think that maybe it's true because people keep saying it over and over. However, I was completely wrong in my head. I don't know why I'm apologizing because apologizing, I never actually told you guys this, but I guess I'm apologizing to my brain or my heart because of what I let my brain think, which was that I let it, I let it turn into, okay, everybody, all of my shanty fannies hate me. I feel emotional. And I'm sure this is not true. But it's, that's how I've been feeling lately. I feel lately like all of you guys don't like me anymore, that you love me and care about me and support me, but that you don't like me and you don't like who I am or how I act or anything like that. And I'm pretty sure that that's not true, but that's what's been going on in my head this whole time. And I have not figured out yet how to fix it because, sorry, my back hurts so bad, so I'm just like rubbing it the whole time. I have not figured out how to fix this in my brain and I don't know how to like, when I read the comments now, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened actually. I don't know what happened because before when I would read the good comments from you guys, my shiny fannies, my actual fannies, um, I would be like, oh, that's awesome. That inspires me. I can keep going. But the past couple of months when I've read them, Probably 75% of the time, it'll be like, oh, they're just saying that. They're just saying that to make me feel better. They don't. They're just here because they've known me for so long and followed me for so long that they're never going to leave because they're just curious to find out what happens to me. And that's the only reason they're staying. They don't like me anymore. They don't love me anymore. Like, and I know that that's not true, logically. Like, my heart knows that, but my head is telling me something different. And that's part of mental illness. We all know this. But for me, it's getting mixed up with different messages from different people. And I don't think that's okay. And I don't know what to do about it. So basically, I am I feel stuck in this place where I don't feel safe enough to talk to you guys about the few times I messed up or the thoughts of self-harm that I've been having or the suicidal thoughts that I've been having lately. I don't feel like I can talk to you guys because I feel like I put so much work into my recovery and recovering all the way and I got there in my opinion for a little bit. I got there and one little comment threw me off and then my mind changed back to where it was and again all of you are going I love you and thank you for uplifting me and stuff and I know that most of you are going to say don't listen to the trolls, don't listen to the haters but again it is so hard not to do that beyond belief hard. And I wish I could, if you're a YouTuber, you know what I'm talking about. And if you're not, I wish I could explain it to you. Like imagine if you just posted a picture of yourself that you think is really pretty and you, th you thought your outfit flattered you and you thought you looked great and your makeup was on point and you felt confident that day, you felt beautiful, you felt good inside and outside and you posted a picture of it on social media and people started attacking you for it. Like, how would you feel? Like, that's kind of how it is all the time when we get trolls. And even though they're not, I shouldn't take their word for being valid, it still hurts me and that would hurt you. I know that would hurt you. Be honest with yourself, that would hurt you if all these people gave an opinion that's super negative on the way that you looked when you felt like you were doing great. Like it's so difficult. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. That's just kind of what I'm dealing with right now. So yes, I have relapsed or messed up 
a few times since we moved here, three times since we moved here, and I want to talk about each time, but I don't know if I feel safe enough to do that, and so, I don't know. I don't know what to do, because I can't just be like, hey, um, if you're going to troll me, don't watch my next video where I talk about the binges and purges. Because if they're trolls, they're just going to watch more and get all of their troll friends to come and join in and wait for the video and make it even worse th than it would have been if I hadn't said anything. So I can't say that. So how do I do this, guys? How do I feel safe enough to talk to you about this without worrying about the trolls? Because I can't just tell them to go away because that'll just make them stay more and snowball into the world of abyss that is in my brain of the eating disorders of the places of the times that I've lived through that have affected my eating disorder voice station in my heart that makes me sad and stupid and ugly inside because I can't seem to beat this effing disease that people in the world say that they've beat and I thought I beat it too and then it came back and I don't know what to do and it's here and I am tempted every day like big time and I've given in three times and what if I give in three more? What if I give in three times a day? What if I give in three times a year? Well, that would be better actually. Anyway, I just feel unsafe when I cannot talk about serious things lately without getting attacked. That's the bottom line. Let's be real. So stop attacking me <laughs> like that will work. But mean troll people out there, stop it. Like, that's so rude. How would you like it if you put your life, your deepest, darkest secrets and struggles out on the internet for the world to see and somebody attacked it every little thing and attacked the most obvious thing that means the most to you, which for me is my family and my loved ones. How can you seriously attack and say that I would take money from my family and loved ones and shanty fannies to fix my teeth and then relapse as if it were a plan, as if I were doing it maliciously, any of those things. How can you actually believe that? And how would you feel if somebody said that about you on the internet? How would that make you feel? Like, stop hiding behind your computer. I would love for you to come to my door and say that to me face to face. Ooh, now I'm getting like all strong and confrontational. I might as well roll with it. So come to my door and say that to me face to face. And I guarantee that if you came to my door and told me your struggles face to face or even on YouTube, I would not go on YouTube and shame you for it. I would not make you feel bad for it. I would tell you that it's going to be okay, that you can get back up. You can try again. You're worth being here. You're beautiful. You have all this worth. And it's like the internet, the trolls, all the people out there are so obsessed with getting attention that they'll do negative attention because that's the easiest to get or so they think it's not true come and be a shanty fanny come and join my comments section where 99 percent of the comments are supportive positive uplifting people have been become friends through my comments people have found god through my comment section and through me it's a good place where we're at and i don't want this i i want you to join that instead of joining the crowd that's getting attention for being straight up effing rude. Rude. Like awful rude. You can get attention for other ways. I give 99% of my attention goes to the positive people out there and the people who do lift me up. So if you want my attention, don't put negativity. Don't tear me down. Don't do all those things. You don't need to do that. You want attention from me? Tell me I look beautiful today because of my heart. Tell me that you're proud of me. Tell me that you think it's awesome that I'm freaking brave enough to put my entire life out there on the internet for anybody to see in order to help myself and to help so many people out there, which I have. Why can't you say that instead of, you aren't the biggest selfish bitch in the world. What kind of person takes $40,000 from her friends and family and then just relapses and starts throwing up again? You're such a bitch and you're so stupid. Why do I even watch your channel? Your channel is garbage and you're garbage and I hope you rot in hell. Why? 
So anyway, thank you for watching today's video. Give me your opinion below and Shanny Fannies, true Shanny Fannies. Listen, are you listening? Yes, because only the true ones watch till the very end. I bet you the majority of people already clicked out of this video, but that's okay. So true Shanny Fannies, thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, no matter how bad my heart is hurting right now, no matter how much I'm struggling, I know deep down in my heart that you guys are always here for me. And I'm so grateful for that. And I see it, I read every single comment. I see all of the love and support. I see all of the edits that you do of me on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and all those things. I see all of the pictures that you make for me and can't send to me right now because of my PO box. That's a whole other story. I see all of you standing up for me in the comments if someone is mean. If someone attacks me, you'll report them until the comment is gone. And like those things are so sweet. And I think the thing that I love the most about you guys, besides what you've done for me and my recovery, is that you guys have made it your, like I've asked you to, but you guys have kind of taken charge of this and become actual, total, real friends with each other in the comments and supporting each other in the comments because we all know I can't do that. I can't. I can't reply to every comment. I can't reply to messages. I can't. There's just too many. And so the fact that you guys understand that and you take it upon yourself to help as many people as you can when you know that I can't, that means more to me than I'll ever be able to express to you. So thank you for that. And thank you for always seeing the good in me and for always believing in me and uplifting me. And please don't be offended if I'm putting so much focus in this video on the negative people and not you guys. It's just how I've been feeling and I haven't felt like I could talk about it because I'm afraid of what would come out. And, but you know what, I did it. Should I post this? Probably. Um, and I'm scared to post this, honestly. But don't think that if you're one of those people that gave me con actual constructive criticism, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about people who are blatantly rude and mean and heart-wrenchingly mean. Like, make me cry in my bed all night mean. Um, not helpful at all, you know? But when you hear it over and over and over, from so many different sources and so many different places, you really start to wonder if it's true. So, yeah. All right, well, there you go. That was a long video and you're welcome. And um, let me know what you think below and thank you again for your support. What is, what? I just found this in the box in front of me that hasn't been emptied yet. Oh, I need to start doing my box a day thing, huh? What is this? Barbie glasses? What is this? Why do I have this? Do they fit? They fit so good. Oh, I look amazing. So anyway, I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I do Instagram live every day and all the time and the places. So I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. And remember forever and always that you are beautiful. You are worth it. And I am too. Thank you for watching. Bye.